As I said, my name is Irene. Um, not that you would know it, because uh, I got back my ID card. Not well, a few years ago. And if you've ever dealt with the Cyprus authorities, they'd spelt it air in. If you read Greek, it says Irene, but if you don't, it's air in. That sucks. Bad. So I started a new job, and so now I'm known as air in. People there don't actually read Greek, and they're looking on a screen with a name that says air in, thinking, breathe out, breathe out. But I can't explain to them that it's actually Irene. And actually, it's karma, because when I was about 18, I worked in the call center, and there was a guy called Supermanian, and I thought that was funny. So, being in a call centre back in the day, there was nobody listening in on your calls as it is today. So I had fun, and a lot of it. So, one of the things that I used to love doing, when I used to answer the phone, would be, sorry, the number you have called is incorrect. Please replace the receiver and dial again. And they would! <laughs> So I would do that over and over again. <laughs> the other one I would do would be time spotted by Oculus would be 12, 45 and 35 seconds. Beep, 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 and then close the phones, which I thought would do excellent. So I had fun with that. And then on the phone, S, F sound the same. As I said, his name was Supermanian. And when they would ask to speak to him or send a letter in, I would spell his name. So I started getting letters in. Fruitmanian. And I thought, hmm, I can have fun with this. Fruitmanian. Fruitmanian. Supermanian. And all sorts. So it was just getting mad. Loopmanian. And so he called me in to a meeting and he had a pile of letters with all of these different names. <coughs> and so there was a lot of us. There was like, so the person who can't spell my name and they put it on the board and I was giggling. He said, Irene, this is how you spell my name. So I've been caught. So that's karma for you. Um, my friends make fun of my accent because I don't, even, I don't even know what accent it is, it depends on what the people around me use, so it just sticks to me. But English accents are fascinating to me because I love the differences between the English accents and the American accents. I cannot, for the sake of me, do an American accent, but uh, there was a story about this English guy who was driving in America and he was going the wrong way because fucking English people, they, they want everyone driving on their side of the road. So he was driving and the police guy stops him. He's like, uh, excuse me sir, you seem to be driving on the wrong side of the road. And the guy goes to him like, um, oh sorry, uh, I'm English. He's like, oh. I might, you're driving down the wrong side of the road. Man, do you fuck Trump in it though? Like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Like they, don't, like they, they don't get it any other way. They don't get it any other way. Um, the last time I, the, the, the first time I actually told this someone like they didn't like it, they got offended, and it reminded me of of what of the advice someone told me like about fights because I'm not good with fighting. I cannot get into fights. It's not for me. I'm more like a person that I can put you down with words and shit like. I love being condescending to people. It's, it's like when you talk down to someone. But yeah, but I love doing that instead of actually getting into like physical fist fights with people. But this one person I knew gave me this wonderful advice. If you ever get into a fight and it's unavoidable, then the best thing to do is just run away. But then I thought, what happens if you cannot run away from a fight? Well, then 
I remember that people when people talk about fights, they always go like, man, that guy was so crazy, I didn't even want to get into it. So I thought, if you get cornered somewhere and there's no way for you to just run away, what you should do is you should immediately strip naked and get your drink, pour it all over yourself, start wanking off, and start walking like a fucking crab and change your fucking voice into like that, what the fucking name of the actor is, like that English guy, Benevolent Cucumber, or whatever his name is. Fucking that guy, yeah, whatever. Be like, I'm gonna fuck you up. I don't think anyone's gonna fuck with you if you do that. I mean, you can as well call it Crap Maga or something. It's like, fucking art form or whatever. Um, I think of all these stupid fucking things most of the time, and I don't even get high. Well, I don't get high because it fucks with my head, it gets me well too paranoid, and it makes me be myself too much, if that makes any sense. But I remember the first time I tried to get high, which was like three or four years ago in the UK, and I've never done it before, so I go to my friend, and I'm like, okay, just make this. I would like one marijuana, and he was like, yo, fuck up. And uh, so he, 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 like, he made one for me, and he was like, this put him like huge, right? I'm, I think it was huge, I don't even fucking remember. And he just, he, he lit it up, and he puffed twice, and he gave it to me. The, the significance of him puffing twice and giving it to me was made abundantly clear to me later because I didn't fucking know you have to puff twice and pass it on. So just down the whole fucking thing. When I finished it, I thought, I'm just gonna ask him to roll one more because this is not working. And, and when I tried to tell him, my face wouldn't work. So he was like, yeah, yeah, let's watch kangaroos talk with each other. I was like, what? And he was like, and I couldn't, I couldn't understand why that was a good idea, but 45 minutes of watching kangaroos just fighting each other, yeah, that was so good when you're high. Um, we tried to go to the movies that night, that didn't work, because we, we actually managed to get a good seat in a double digger bus, and we were on top, and we didn't want to get out at the stop, so we missed the stop three times. So we were just like, just fuck it, I just, let's just go to the pub. So we called our friend, whose name is Richard, and he was fat. Very, very funny, insanely funny to me. And uh, see, the guy gets it. And uh, so we were drinking, and he was one of those pubs that has, um, I think you put coins in it, a jukebox. So we wanted to change the music, and we said, Richard, to change the music. And we were just talking and laughing, and then I turn around and I see him still trying to put points into the jukebox. He was like, bend over, and his crack was showing, and I was like, okay, Nick, watch this. So I got a penny, and I drop it down his crack hole, and I'm like, sing, bitch! And he turns around, and it was not him. It was, man, I, I ran out of there like, woo! Super fast. Um, <laughs> we were actually considering doing bungee jumping, whatever the fuck that's called, over the, the river in London. There was like this thing they had there and you were allowed to bungee jump over the river, which is fucking, it's a fucking stupid idea because how can you trust someone with your life like that? I mean, it's just a, it's just a piece of rubber. But then come to think of it, if a failed piece of rubber brought me into this life, then it's only fair that another one takes my life away. I mean, it's, it's fair, but I still, I still wouldn't do it. I still wouldn't do it. This is my biggest fault, but people then tell me, Dennis, don't use the word biggest when you describe yourself. Not in any way, shape, or form. I was never really self-conscious about it, except for these two minor occasions where I may have overreacted a little bit. So the first one, I was still in high school, and I came up to a girl who was up to my shoulder. Anyone who's my height will know that finding a girl shorter than me is a challenge of its own, because there are like three of them now playing the world. So after a few minutes of talking, she tells me, sorry boy, I have to be this tall to ride this roller coaster. And I said to her, what roller coaster? You're shorter than me, the best thing you can be is a bouncy castle. Two minutes in, she'll be deflated. Oh. 
Then this other time, uh, came up to two girls, but I didn't intend to flirt with them. Yet still one of them said to the other, let's see if his pickup line will be as short as he is. <laughs> Suddenly I got triggered a little bit and I said, a pickup line? No. A girl like you needs a pickup truck. <laughs> but being the insensitive, sarcastic, and just passive-aggressive prick that I am does have its advantages, believe it or not. Sure, I may have trouble making friends or getting into relationships, but at least I save, a lot, save up a lot of money with tequila shots. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, that's the biggest Jewish mentality I've ever heard. <laughs> but let's just say my great-grandparents were not the biggest fans of the Germans. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to make any Holocaust jokes tonight, because that would be too cheap. And yes, there is such a thing as too cheap for a Jew. <laughs> but I still have that stereotypical Jewish mentality, for example. Um, like, it's not optional, it's genetic. So, for example, I don't smoke because cigarettes are expensive. <laughs> and the ash burns back some memories. <laughs> I also uh, play video games on my computer because, again, PlayStation and Xbox are too expensive. Each game individually is between 30 to 60 euros. You know, that's out of my pocket, basically. So I like to keep it to my PC. I like being part of that PC master race because it's the only master race that accepts Jews. <laughs> uh, for those of you who did not realize yet, I am a foreigner. I got my separate passport like eight years ago, but uh, I'm originally from Eastern Europe. And I think I blend in quite well. I even have brown hair, brown eyes. But people can still spot me as an outsider, especially when I drive and I only use two lines to park my car. <laughs> it's the little thing. <laughs> but like, I know, I am not right? But um, one thing I do want Zippers to explain to me though is that, you know when a girl passes by, minds her own business, and then a car drives by and honks like there is no tomorrow? Does that shit ever work? Like, I'm actually curious as to what is the perfect scenario, the dream that the guys are asking to happen. Like, can you imagine meeting a married couple who met this way? And then you ask the wife, oh, how did you meet each other? And she tells you about the first time they saw each other. I was walking down the street, minding my own business, and then I turned around because a car beeps at me. And as soon as I saw that young stallion in that silver Honda Civic, <laughs> I knew it was the one. <laughs> That's the reason we don't have rappers like Drake on this island, because what are we supposed to rap about? Impressing chicks with our Japanese cars? <laughs> it's not as gangster. Imagine like, you know, hearing on Spotify something like, I am the dating guru, I am Master Yoda, and every chick turns around when she hears my Toyota. <laughs> it's not that good. And as shit as that song may be, it could still probably win Eurovision. I mean, have you seen that piece of crap that won this year? It's literally the only time when Americans can make fun of us Europeans and Australians for some fucking reason. And like, the song this year, it was like extra shit. It was garbage on steroids. Seriously, was I the only one who was pissed off with Israel that day? I bet it made a lot of people reconsider the idea of Holocaust in this room. <laughs> See, after all, there is nothing to cheat for you. <laughs> anyway guys, that's it for me. It was a pleasure. family. Um, my granddad is getting on a bit. Old people tend to do that. Um, he's, he's very old now and he's, he's starting to misremember things. You know, things aren't going right in his mind. You know, you'll, you'll go in and you'll say, you know, I was stationed in uh, France during the war. And my grandmother will walk in and say, no dear, that was the family holiday to Normandy. <laughs> You know, he'll say something like, I was school boxing champion, you know. I was, I was training every day for that title, you know. Running upstairs, running up and down. No, dear, no, dear. That was the, on film four last night, Rocky. <laughs> you know, then he goes completely off the wall. He's like, I remember back in the war, I was 7th Armored Division, 
desert rats. Behind enemy lines, the ninth flying corps, green chameleons. And we, we flew over the castle. The castle, we dropped, I parachuted down into a castle. And who was there but none other than Herr Hitler himself? I was fencing champion in my division. So I drew my sword. Hitler drew his. They always carry a sword. He says, <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, yeah. so he draws his sword. They're fighting, sword fighting, you know. You're very good at sword fighting. Yes, I am. I am champion. And then. Who trained you? Michael from PR. <laughs> Did Michael ever tell you what happened to your father? <laughs> no, he told me you killed him. <laughs> the truth is, then my grandmother walks in and she says, No, dear. No. That's the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> but yeah, my family is really, you know, we were on a family holiday to Malaysia, you know, in Malaysia, the country. Um, it's, a, it's a problem foreign countries for people like me, English people, because anything with more flavor than a potato and my intestines give up. <laughs> I'm just like, oh! Um, I had like the worst diarrhea you can imagine. The worst diarrhea, like it was insane. It was leaking out. Um, there's not many toilets in the jungle, unfortunately. But I I'm rushing around the jungle trying to find a toilet. You know, I can't find one because there's not many toilets in the jungle. But I actually, I managed to find one. I found a toilet in the jungle. The only toilet in the jungle. I don't know why it was there, what it was, but there was one. I opened the door, right? Everything starts off, but it's got a wooden floor. There's a real toilet bowl. Perfect. However, however, there's a tree growing through the toilet. <laughs> Talk about toilet trees. <laughs> I mean, this, this family holiday was really... My, my dad said one day, let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. I found this place called Shark Bay. <laughs> and I say, Shark Bay? Shark Bay. I don't know, it sounds like there could be sharks there. It's a tourist thing, don't worry. It's, they say they name it after the tourists, that is fine. So we go to this place with the whole family. We swim out 10 meters, 10 meters. Hundreds of sharks, more sharks than you can imagine, swimming in a circle around us. My, they weren't that big, okay? They weren't that. They were, they were small sharks. They were about as big as my little brother, but we don't care about him. Um, yeah, my mother, my mother says, I can't deal with this. My mum says, I'm just going back. To, I'm going back. I'm going back to the shore. And she swims off. She swims off back to shore. All of the sharks follow her. <laughs> I turn to my dad and I go, should we say something? He goes, nah. <laughs> I go, why? 16 years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mum doesn't have a leg anymore. <laughs> but she's, she's very competitive table tennis player, my mum. We have a table tennis table at home, and she takes it extremely seriously. She hates to lose at table tennis. Yes, yeah, I, I will. I will do every, anything, anything to put her off. You know, I you know, I came out to her while we were playing table tennis. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Mum, I need to tell you something before you make this serve. Um, I'm I'm a bisexual. <laughs> And she just does the meanest serve you can imagine, and she says, Take that, gay boy! <laughs> I'm, I'm very wary of being stereotyped.
scientifically um, queer, you know? I, I, you know? Sometimes I'll just catch myself doing something which is just a little bit dare, like, oh dear, I'm, I'm perpetuating stereotypes, I'll just be standing somewhere like this. <laughs> I, 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 I wanna, I'm part of my school's drama society, how gay is that? Um, I, did this, I did the school musical. <laughs> no one likes school musicals. No one has ever liked school musicals. They're awful. And everyone knows, everyone in the school musical knows it's terrible, right? We were all like, oh my god, this is the worst thing we've ever done. Why are we doing this? We had these little microphones attached to our faces, right? To, you know, for some reason, I don't know. It was stupid, I hated them. But, you know, I was like, I did my scene, I have a scene in the musical, I have a dramatic scene, so I can't sing. And um, I do this scene, I have to give the microphone to someone else. Yeah, so I, I, I go off stage, oh my god, it's dreadful, it's awful, it's fucking shit! What are we doing? I take off the microphone, I pass it to him, and he goes, oh my god, fucking tragic. And then my drama teacher says, SWITCH OFF THE MICROPHONE! <laughs> <laughs> WE CAN HEAR YOU! <laughs> my name is Andreas Kampianakis. I'm 29 years old and uh, I hope that till now you had a great time because this is going to end right now, uh, first of all. And uh, secondly, this is my first attempt in stand-up comedy, so please don't fuck me, at least not here on stage. Yeah. Be a little more romantic, let's have a drink first, let's uh, discuss about something. I'm a little bit of tender guy. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a half Cypriot, half Cretan, uh, my mother is from here. Um, second child of the three children family, so as you can understand, my life is, uh, till now, was like more an episode of Dynasty with uh, a little more drama. Yeah, everyone that has a secret mother can understand my position. Yeah. Um, I finished my studies in engineering about uh, four years ago, and as you can judge by my by my outlook, it's the last time I finished anything in my life in any section. Uh, so you wouldn't say, however, that. Uh, during my studies as an engineer, I was some kind of womanizer or some kind of great fucker. No, not at all. Um, it's a tradition in engineering, men not to fuck at all. And this is a result of basically two factors. Men engineers stink. They are like uh, walking dead. Yeah, something like this. And also, if any of you has ever been in an engineering school, um, we'll see that men over there are like uh, the missing link between the apes and the humans. <laughs> but the difference is that this creature can hold the frappe for far too long time than any of you motherfuckers. Uh, we have great tolerance in Catherine, okay? And other substances, but it's not for here right now. Um, also, we seem to know a little bit of math. A little bit. But uh, our vocabulary level is way too low for functional and organized societies, so most of our uh, phrases are coming from uh, are like coming from tribes from Papua New Guinea. <laughs> this is a, a, a typical conversation with an engineer. Unfortunately, the series of uh, not getting fucked continues to today. And uh, most probably it's because uh, I have made serious mistakes in my life. First of all, I'm here, but you and me both on that. Fuck off. Uh, also, I have no car. I go everywhere by bike. Uh, pretty much I'm really sensitive in uh, ecology issues. Uh, bullshit, I can afford no car, so I follow the tradition of being Greek and broke. Uh, and uh, finally, I'm, uh, I belong to, let's say, a community, a society or whatever, of uh, those guys with the vaping machines. Yeah, the e-smokers, the whatever the fuck those guys are called. And uh, this is a proof of how stupid a man can be. When is uh, when he's next to a woman? Well, I wake up one morning and uh, my ex says to me, "You know, Andreas, uh, you smoke too much, and uh, you should buy one of those devices." And I'm like, 
What do you mean? Why should I? She says, uh, first of all, it will be financially more viable. Secondly, uh, it will be healthier for you. And uh, the last part is that you will not smell that much. Fuck off, bitch. I was an engineer. I, can, I have done anything in terms of things. I smelled too much. I was smelling for about six to seven years of my life like a, a dead animal. So re relax on that. However, as most of us tend to get persuaded or forced by women to do stuff, uh, this is common in uh, married men, uh, I take the decision and go to a vape store to buy this kind of device. As I go to the vape store, I see a girl over there and uh, she says to me, hello, uh, what kind of uh, flavor would you like to buy? I'm like, honey, I've been smoking for about 11 years, two and a half packs of Marlboro Reds. Right now, my tongue cannot distinguish the difference in taste between Rust and the Gordon Ramsay dish. <laughs> <laughs> so, she understands the whole concept and says, relax, we have plenty of flavors for you. Uh, we have uh, watermelon, we have apple, we have peach. And I'm like, shit, I'm drunk again. I'm in a grocery store. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, like I said, my name is uh, Florin. I'm from Romania. Um, Irene actually said to me today twice, ah, I know a lot about Armenia. <laughs> it's a common response. <laughs> Lots of people confuse the two countries. Mostly because, and this isn't like a lot of Cypriots and English people tend to know Romanians and who we are and their natural reaction is what you would expect. It's, Oh my god, you're Romanian! Wow! <laughs> what a coincidence! I, uh, I have a cousin and I see him. Honey, 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 come here! He's Romanian! <laughs> you're Romanians? What the fuck did you bring me here? <laughs> wow! Wow! In Bucharest! Yeah, yeah, very interesting. The other response I get, and this is very common from Americans, it's usually... Er, Romanian? Is, is that, that like the type of food? <laughs> Do you have? Do you have electricity? <laughs> I yeah. Central Asia, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm from Romania, and uh, growing up there, it was very similar. I'm assuming to how it was here. Uh, our parents uh, would always, you know, make sure when we went outside, we'd be properly dressed, you know, in case. Uh, there would be rain or whatever, and whenever whenever we leave the house, they always give us useful tips like, and remember, Florin, don't don't pick up any of the heroin needles. Okay, you go out. And play. <laughs> you have fun, you little scamper. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It was very uh, environmentally safe. <laughs> yeah, that's the word I'm going for right now. Uh, <laughs> The wild dogs didn't help. Like, I remember when we said we ran out to play, we ran out to play. Like, we would go. When we left the house, we like, come on, man. Come on, we can do it. Just run. Praise Jesus. Yeah. So that was my experience. It was literally running, ducking, jumping, climbing. It was the first triathlon we ever had. Kids just, yeah. And it was, it was great. Like, it really thinned out the herd. Like, my generation, healthy as nails. Like, you, you, seriously, do you ever wonder why Romanians win at the Olympics so much? The gymnastics team, think about it. <laughs> gymnastics team, every year. Wild dogs, people. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, no, it, it's great. Like, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, people? So where the fuck did Florin sit? I'm asking because my wallet's there. <laughs> I'm joking, man. 
man, I'm joking. I wouldn't put my wallet near you. Anyway, uh, you having fun, people? You having fun? Okay, can I hear a round of applause for the performance tonight? All right, excellent. Are you enjoying your drinks? Uh, you should try actually a cocktail they have at the bar. It's pretty strong. It's gonna knock you the fuck out. You won't remember a thing. They call it the Bill Cosby. <laughs> Seriously, if you got offended at that, you're gonna have a long and painful fucking night, right? So get your shit together. Okay, so um, my name is Costandinos, and today I went on Facebook, which is a pretty fucking mistake to begin with, right? Because Facebook doesn't serve a fucking purpose, man. The only purpose that Facebook serves today is to see who of your friends are racist. Right? That's practically the only way. Um, and I saw a thing actually that a friend of mine posted today. Right? It was supposed to be a rejection letter by the Bern University in Switzerland. Right? Switzerland, you know where the Nazis took their goal, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> and the, it was a rejection letter for Albert Einstein, okay? And the letter read, and I quote, Oh, Mr. Einstein, we're sorry, but your theory of relativity doesn't seem to be valid, blah, 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 blah. And she was one of these fucking idiot life coaches thing. And she was like, oh, don't give up on your dreams. See how it went for Einstein. Oh, they rejected him and now he's back. Hashtag feeling blessed. Hashtag believe your dreams. <laughs> and you're like, how the fuck can you fall for something fake as that? It's a German-speaking university sending a letter to a German guy in 1907 in English. <laughs> How can you not see that that's a fake? Why do you think they, people don't clap, it's a real fucking story, people are idiots and they're among us, okay? Why did she think that the Bern University did that, okay? Why? Were they worried about the diversity? Last time, last time I checked in the first half of the 20th century, Germans didn't give much of a fuck about diversity. Yeah, it was pretty much Blonde hair, blue eyes, mustache optional. Right. Yeah. That's a nice joke. Okay, today. I shaved because it was fucking itchy. You don't care about that. But every single one of my friends who saw me did the same fucking joke. I shit you not. Okay. Every single one of my friends went, Oh my god, dude. Did you shave? You look like a shaved pussy, man. First off, what kind of women have you been with? <laughs> Seriously, ladies, take it from me. If your genital area looks anything like this, go to the doctor. You have a problem, okay? It's called aglitis. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, um, has any one of you been bungee jumping ever? Uh, anyone wants to go bungee jumping? Yeah. Why the fuck would you do that? Are you fucking insane? Okay, who the fuck sits on the beach? Beautiful sun, beautiful, beautiful sea, right? The cool sea, drinking hand, there's women and men in skimpy beach wear and says, do you know what would make this experience even better? Pretend suicide. Oh, if I could only pretend to kill myself, to throw myself off a building, oh my god, this would be awesome. Right? Can you imagine the first fucking idiot who tried bungee jumping? Can you imagine that guy? And it's a guy, right? It's not a woman, right? Women in general are not that stupid, okay? Yay! Yay! You're not easily manipulated. Anyway. Well, it has to be one of those joke guys, okay, you know, hat in the verse. One of these guys who's adrenaline junkie, and he goes like, Yeah, man, let's do it, man. Yeah, jump off the tower, man. That's awesome. Let's do it. God. Imagine the guy dropping off the tower, okay? 
Okay, and the guy who owns the body dropping behind him, Joey. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Jenny, we need 10 feet of homeless. Actually, make that a fart because he's a fat fuck. Yeah, he shaved recently. I don't know why, he looks like a shaved pussy. Dude, and the owners of the bungee jumping establishment, they have the audacity, the audacity of saying, bungee jumping? That's perfectly safe. We have specially trained personnel to guarantee for your safety. And I'm like, who's that personnel? Is that the 18-year-old boy from Ayanapa who only has one shirt that says Aya, Aya, Aya fucking Napa? Right? The guy who has been drinking since yesterday and he's high as fuck? Is that my lifeline? The guy you go up and say, okay, man, um, okay, I have to tie this to my feet. So, um, uh, uh, I'm guessing you're an engineer of sorts. I'm guessing you went to the university, maybe to the college. Nah, brah. <laughs> nah, brah, I don't go to them clubs, brah. I only go to car wash, brah. <laughs> hey, brah, take my right hand, brah. I'll hurt. Brah, I gave you the wrong hand, brah. That's so fucking weird, brah. And this is why you don't go budget jumping, you fucking idiot. My always there for a joke. Okay.